Chris Paff with Chris Paff Tech Media LLC, back here in the fabulous blue room, as always, at Gambla Lodge. And I'm here with a gentleman who needs no introduction here in Oslo. That's Stein Lindman Johannesson. He's the head of TWE. And he's part of this great panel, ending the day, a fabulous scrum with some of your colleagues in the industry talking about taking market share from each other and ripping each other's eyes out. But no, seriously, it'll be much more collegial. Talk about what you've been doing with TWE and, uh, and where you, you see things going from here. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think uh, in general, operators have been very good over the last few years to stay relevant in an industry where you know you could argue that um, TV viewing is falling and streaming consumption is increasing. But I think as an as an operator with a uh, with a customer base that consists of a lot of different segments, it's crucial to try to find uh, what should I say the, the perfect solution for everyone in that customer base. And I think operators have been really good at that over the years with you know. Uh, building new um, functionalities into a service such as, you know, way back uh, rental movies, catch up content, start over, but also now starting to embrace streaming content uh, such as Netflix, HBO, Wireplay, etc. Uh, so I think we, you know, building that into a part of our service, um, um, similar to what we've done with Linear TV, uh, aggregating all that content is, you know, our job to stay relevant. And I mean, are you looking at bundling? I mean, t talk about you know the different ways you're doing this because, of course, you know I I'm, had a conversation with your colleague uh, uh, Robert Lura earlier, and and we talked a bit more about UX UI design and some of the things he's you know looking at. You know what what uh, since you use the word relevant, what are the things that make you relevant to the consumer? Yeah, it's a good question. I think. Um, what, what has happened in the Norwegian market and maybe some of the other Scandinavian, Scandinavian market is that if you take sports rights, for instance, winter sports, which is you know a key a key thing for Norwegians and Swedes and Finns, especially, these rights have been spread across different media houses now. So if you want to watch you know biathlon, you have to go to one service uh, or cross country a different service or alpine skiing a third service. What we can do is that we can. We have all this content on our platform, and what Robert talked about was, you know, to uh, try to collect everything into a seamless user experience where the consumer can find, you know, the event they want to watch across different services. So I think that's where we can give some key value back to the consumers when, where they find everything in one spot. And is that a pass-through, or how does that work? You know. Um, yeah, no, not necessarily, because a lot of this stuff is on linear channels. So, you know, it's part of the package, but it's basically to combine everything in a user interface where the customers can find things across different channels or services, basically. Which is still, you know, huge. I mean, and, and that's something that other markets should learn from, hint, hint, United <laughs> States. Um, uh, but I, I love that because, of course, that also points the way to what I've considered a holy grail, which is content discovery and access across services. Uh, so it looks like you're, you're doing that in a way where you have rights or can do whatever deals you want, leveraging linear channels, which is super cool. But uh, I'm happy that you mentioned uh, content discovery because that's, uh, that's an area where I think we're, that I'm especially proud of our development over the last few years. So, so we took a bet um, a few years back that this is an area that we think that we can dif differentiate uh, um, as an aggregator compared to uh, the, the, the various streaming services such as Netflix, Viaplay, et cetera, which they have their own content. As an aggregator, we can aggregate all this and present it in a nice way to our consumers and create some additional value. And I think that we, we spent the last two to three years to build an, uh, a lot of enablers in our service, but now we're starting to take that out as um, increased customer value. So, you know, we have improved our search, we have improved our recommendation engines, we have uh, improved our metadata, which, you know, builds the foundation to all, the, all this stuff, and then, you know, we create a nice UX on top of it and try to help our consumers to navigate in a very fragmented content world. Yeah, and, and I think that, that that's, that, that's the, really the challenge, obviously, but in, in a market uh, such as the Nordics, where you have affluent customers who are digitally sophisticated, who have a pretty fair amount of choice. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it, it's, it's a bigger, bigger battle to, to win in that sense. So whatever you're doing must be, uh, you know, must, must be ahead of the game, if you will. Yeah, I think so. Uh, at least it's a game to chase because we see from the customer research that we do that, you know, consumers think they have, they have control over all their subscriptions and where content uh, is. But when we start to talk to them, they don't have control. Uh, they think that they subscribe to one or two services. They subscribe to five services when you start you know, to dive into this. And they're really not able to find the content that they really want to watch. So I think as an, as an operator and as a telco, we, we are good at uh, bundling and pricing stuff in a favorable way, of, um, in a good way for consumers. And with our TV service, we're now trying to, to, to build you know, the, the place to find content and navigate through all this um, uh, this uh, fantastic content variety that, that is in the market now. Yeah, and I mean, I love the example of sports, of course, because that's, that's so, so bifurcated now. I mean, w w whether you're into cricket in India or uh, you're into cross-country skiing in Norway, shout out to Advar Bro again. <laughs> um, so uh, can't resist, it's a super cool story. Uh, but that's, that's uh, you know, an area where there's so many different things that you can bring into that, you know, whether there's short form content or, you know, whatever else that might capture the attention where your brand, uh, you know, is, is seen, is felt, is engaged with. Mm. But I think uh, we, we do a lot of stuff that's interesting in the Nordics, but I think we have a lot to learn from the American market, for instance, where you, you are at the forefront of, uh, you know, statistics and, you know, that extra layer of experience in terms of sports. Um, I think it's uh, NBA has done a lot of, lot of interesting stuff over the years. I just saw NBC Universal upstairs with, uh, with you know, the experience they create for their consumers for the Olympics next year. It's a fantastic uh, uh, thing, and I think there's lots of experience for us to develop the service if we if we like to. Yeah, I will say something that, that you don't know. So I'm I'm a Brooklyn Nets fan, and I have the Yes app where I stream it, and it's uh, Chettle Hornelin's company Ease Live, which is now part of Everts, that creates that layer for the the first screen co-watching. Mm -hmm. That that they do that, um, and I think they work with Scenic to do that. But so a little Norwegian innovation there, you know. <laughs> I so, didn't know. <laughs> yeah, see, now you know. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's a brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, app. And, it, you know, if, if you don't want to participate, fine, you know, whatever. But, um, but that's, I mean, and, you know, this is stuff that I'm mostly watching on mobile. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you know, just to give further props to the Norwegian market, you know, all that great innovation that's come out of TV2 in Bergen, that's found its way around the world, you know. It's incredible. Yeah, th that's, that's a really amazing story, what, what they have been able to spin off. Uh, For 30 plus years, unbelievable. I'm, I'm amazed, it's a fantastic histori uh, story, I think. Yeah, yeah it yeah, is, yeah. it is. I think we should do a documentary on it. What do you think? It's interesting, uh, TV2 is a... Um, no, I'm serious, we should. Yeah, it's, um, it's a fantastic Norwegian uh, institution, I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, they're hugely important to the, to the Norwegian audience, audience and it's, you know, it's a new part of the Norwegian identity now, I think, uh, after 30 years. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a fantastic company to work with and they do a lot of interesting stuff. So uh, absolutely a good idea. Yeah, but you yourself are doing great stuff and I look forward to hearing you in that scrum. I think I'm gonna, I was gonna put my money on uh, uh, Jonas until I met you. <laughs> so now I think I'm putting my money on you and this guy, you is T. We, which is Stein Lindman Johannesson, uh, who's uh, uh, just doing fabulous stuff, and we thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you.